welcome friends in ip portfolio management in many video sessions we have discussed that we have to generate value from our ip and uh, when we say value generation from ip we have discussed that uh, we need to increase income ip can be a source of uh, extra income for us it is possible by getting some kind of exclusive rights uh, some kind of uh, competitive advantage it is possible to generate uh, some kind of extra goodwill for you through which also your income may increase you may charge a premium price because of higher goodwills it is always possible that uh, you can use ip as a good negotiating power in your business dealings as a startup you can raise fund from your ip so there are different types of uses of your ip portfolio but when you are making income from your ip which is sometime not clear that income is coming from ip because it may be income from your business operations you have a particular ip with you and now you are using that ip in making a product you are selling that product to the market so you are not very clear that how much of this income is coming from your ip because uh, you are having a better quality camera in your mobile phone and because of that better quality camera in your mobile phone your phones are uh, having bigger market size or you are able to charge a higher premium price from your uh, better quality camera it is not income from ip but as we have discussed in our earlier videos there may be some direct streams of uh, income generation from your ip for example if you are giving your ip in terms of franchise mode in terms of licensing where there is a clear stream of revenue which is coming from ip so this is income from ip and when you have income from anything anything that country's taxation laws will also be applicable on that so in this particular session we will be discussing about uh, how taxation related to ip related incomes are going to be applicable and uh, what type of issues are involved when we are talking of uh, taxation in uh, ip incomes so uh, we are going to have uh, uh, ip taxation under the income tax act also uh, that is particularly more relevant from uh, india's point of view that uh, how indian it it tax income tax act and uh, it may vary it may vary from uh, country to country then uh, uh, there are some international uh, ip taxation essentials also we are going to discuss in this particular case the issues related to transfer pricing because uh, lot of ip related incomes are generated when we are doing the technology transfer and when we are doing the technology transfer the amount of uh, transfer of technology the price which we are giving to that uh, how it is affecting our uh, taxation related matters then we are also going to discuss a very important arms length principle which is applicable in taxation uh, purpose so all these things we are going to discuss in this particular uh, session now taxation is a very important Uh, you can subject matter of uh, any particular uh, government and uh, generally governments are very much concerned about the taxation because it is uh, the most important source of revenue generation for any government whether the income uh, or the tax is coming directly or indirectly but uh, governments are very much concerned you understand and uh, many countries are becoming quite friendly because of the low tax rates they want to promote business in their countries and uh, they try to keep the tax so low that uh, it becomes attractive to do business in those uh, countries so taxation is uh, a very important business decision uh, across the globe governments are keen on assets r&d within their territories to boost revenue creation jobs and improving the r&d activities intellectual property is uh, increasingly valuable for tax optimization for governments and firms 
because of uh, inherent nature of intangibility both company as well as government they won't want uh, they both want to take maximum benefit of uh, uh, this intangible aspect of intellectual property for optimizing their tax structure every company and every government tax is a broad term but within tax uh, indirect direct uh, who is going to be paying the tax uh, like in our case there may be income tax also there may be gst also there may be other type of uh, uh, taxes also excise tax also so uh, you optimize that overall this much is expected earning uh, from the government's point uh, that okay this much is the expected earning i want to have for my country from tax so how much of that will come from the direct tax how much of that will come from the indirect tax so there will become a complete uh, you can say uh, portfolio of taxable incomes and uh, so that is the optimization from the government side from the firm side also interesting thing is that government wants to maximize its revenue from the tax and as an individual or as a firm i want to minimize my tax liabilities so it's a very interesting thing government to maximize tax collection firm or individual to minimize tax liabilities so both have their own purpose or their own uh, objectives and accordingly optimization of tax structure becomes a very interesting problem now in some cases where ip is uh, very much uh, though entire ip is intangible but within that also there are few ips which are more visible than other types of ips like uh, trade secret know how these are known as non codified ips because uh, you have no idea you have no documentation related to trade secrets and know how while in case of patents trademarks copyrights design etc you have proper documents available that's why these are known as codified ips so when i'm saying the taxation related matters uh, these are more pertinent or more related to codified ips where you have proper documentation where documentations are not available this uh, income from ip is not uh, visible income now generally tax related structures are very complicated things now in terms of uh, ip related income the most common word which will be used again and again in this particular session that is the royalty income how this royalty income comes because we have already understood that uh, how uh, things are happening uh, in terms of ip commercialization let me tell you that uh, you are a company based in usa now you have done some kind of fdi foreign direct investment and you open your india branch now india branch wants to manufacture the same products which you are manufacturing in usa and for that purpose this india branch requests you for transfer of technology so you have transferred some know how some technologies to your india branch so that india branch can manufacture those product that you are manufacturing in usa now because you have transferred technology to your india branch this india branch will pay royalty to you and now this royalty income is one such simple example which is purely ip based income technology means ip knowledge so since american company is giving knowledge to indian company and in lieu of that indian company will pay 
royalty to the American company. That is the royalty income system. Now, this royalty income system, the income which is coming because of royalty, it has to be appropriately taxed. It has to be appropriately taxed. That is one thing. Second is, since Indian company is a part of American company. So, the income from this operations, whatever business Indian company is doing, that income from business will also be going to American company, will go to its parent company. So, business income will also go to the American company. So, there will be two streams of revenue for the American company. One because of transfer of technology and the second is because of the business operations in India. And uh, there are different types of tax uh, systems. For example, generally tax on royalty income is much less as compared to tax on business income. So, most of the companies they try to give in this kind of arrangement which is there on your screen, you see that both companies are having same ownership, same management. So, generally as I say the tax on royalty is less as compared to tax on business income. The Indian company will like to give most of the money to American company through royalty payments to take advantage of uh, low tax payments, but this is not going to benefit, this is rather not acceptable to the national governments, because it is uh, actually hampering their interest of more tax realization. So, that is a kind of debate discussions which are happening at multiple levels that how do we streamline all these issues. So, I hope this one point is clear about royalty income that is income because of IP. I gave you example of technology transfer. Similarly, royalty incomes are also possible in trademark, in copyrights. I have given you rights of my book. I authored a book, you are a publishing house. Now, you want to publish my book. I have given you entire manuscript of my book and in lieu of that you are saying that you will get annually 10 percent of whatever income is generated from the sale of these books. So, that is royalty income for authors. Similarly, you are a big chain of fast food. I want to open a fast food outlet in this city. I approached you, you said ok, you can use my name, you have to put this type of sign board and you can use my name, but for using your name, I have to pay royalty to you. So, there are royalty payments in all forms of IP, not limited to patent, but it is in the field of uh, trademark also, it is in the field of copyright also, it is in the field of design also. That is why I said that uh, royalty income is the most commonly used word whenever we are talking of uh, tax systems on IP income. Then uh, these days a uh, lot of IP commercialization is happening uh, through online uh, systems. In that online system sometime it is uh, still not very concrete in black and white it is still a complex phenomena, tricky phenomena to actually categorize your income and uh, whether it is part of uh, IP related income or uh, some other kind of uh, uh, business operation related income that is yet not uh, concretized, it is uh, in the pipeline to have more clarity on these things. Now, coming to specific to Indian scenario, where uh, Indian Income Tax Act is applicable. So, we all know that uh, taxation on IP related income is a global phenomena these days and uh, particularly uh, as our science, technology etcetera is uh, improving, more IP creation is happening, uh, almost uh, all national governments uh, 
they are uh, trying to make uh, laws related to IP income uh, taxation. And uh, though in India's uh, Income Tax Act, there is no specific definition of uh, intellectual property income and uh, tax on that intellectual property. But however, this word royalty is there and uh, it is actually taxed under the system of uh, uh, royalty and uh, IP is taxed through various indirect legislation in India's case and uh, because of these indirect legislation, it is uh, actually creating a challenge about uh, entire process of IP creation, development, acquisition, utilization etcetera because of uh, I will say that uh, income tax act is not so uh, clear with respect to IP related income. Now, the indirect categories through which IP intellectual property can be taxed in India are deductions, income, goods and sales tax GST. So, in the deductions, it is the pre existing stage of an IP, the cost which is incurred since it is a matter of law. So, we have to go word by word, it is the cost which is incurred on analysis and manufacturing capital expenditure on R and D is treated as an expense and it is to be deducted from the gross income received from the calculation of income tax. So, it is a kind of a relief whatever expenses you are incurring in R and D for generating the IP that can be deducted as such from your gross income and uh, it is considered as an expenses and uh, therefore, you will have lesser income for calculation of income tax. So, uh, all the expenses as part of your R and D activity and it is more important for individuals that uh, if uh, I have a particular level of income, let us say rupees x C R, I got one IP in And I say that for developing this IP, the kind of raw material, lab, etcetera, which I developed, I spent about rupees 10 lakh. So, from my gross income of X C R, I can deduct this 10 lakh, and then whatever is left that will be my taxable income though there are various other provisions of deductions also. I am not going into the income tax class, but R and D expenses can be deductible from my gross income. The second is the income related component. Income from an IPR either by assignment or licensing is treated as capital gain. So, we have a provision of tax on capital gain or income received from royalties under the income tax act of 1961. So, capital gain or royalty that is mentioned. So, income from IP is uh, taxed either of these two. Then GST tax on the sale of IP. So, if it is properly invoiced, so there will be a GST component that will also come on that value of IP, transfer of IP, licensing of IP assignment of IP all these are covered under GST because all these things are services. So, all these service activities are taxed under uh, GST system. So, that is also uh, one type of uh, uh, taxing system which is applicable in case of IP. Under 1961 income tax act in India, intangible assets uh, are considered as depreciable assets for the computation of income. These days there is a very popular term EBITDA and in EBITDA also the last word A that is amortization. So, that amortization is basically how you are depreciating your uh, IP assets that is uh, included in this uh, accounting terms also. Intellectual property and accounting treatment when IP is created and acquired the money flow will be shown as an asset. 
expenses incurred on R and D are written off under the concept of uh, materiality. An asset will be acquired for the direct purchase of IP. The plant machinery acquired along with the know-how, design, drawing are subject to levy the different types of tax or charges. So, the meaning is when you are uh, procuring any kind of IP, when you are uh, uh, creating any kind of IP, in our accounting term it is shown as an asset and all the expenses on R and D are shown as all these expenses on R and D activities are written off under the concept of materiality means uh, whatever uh, uh, equipments, uh, whatever tools, uh, whatever raw material etcetera that is uh, actually consumed for the development of IP. So, there is no need of uh, including them in your uh, uh, balance sheets and uh, the payments which you are making as part of royalty will go under the heading of liabilities in your balance sheet. So, the payments which you are making under the royalty are part of section 9 1 part 6, where the transfer is made for lump sum consideration once for all will result in capital gain accessible to the tax. So, as we just saw that uh, royalty payments are subject to capital gain charges. Capital gain just to give you an example, whenever you are doing sale and purchase of land for example. So, when you are doing sale and purchase of land, it is subjected to capital gain. Another example is shares of the companies. So, if you are buying selling the shares of the companies and if you are holding the share for more than one year, the gain which you are getting on that uh, particular sale proceed is charged as capital gain. So, there are not only the IP related income, but in majority of other cases also capital gain is applicable. So, that is why we said in the beginning that uh, there is no separate mention of IP, but it is possible to include IP related income through various other provisions which are there in our uh, income tax act. Now, whether the transfer is made for a limited period as a recurring payment based on the trading results of the user intellectual property is revenue receipts. Then after this section 9, another section 32, 1 part 2 in respect of depreciation of assets. Depreciation means the value is declining over a period of time. We all know that uh, patent is only for 20 years which is the most popular type of IP and uh, a patent will have more value in the beginning and uh, slowly and slowly once uh, your technology is still alive and uh, you will see that there will be more competing technologies available with other competitors also or competitors may have a better technology. So, your technology will depreciate its value will decline over a period of time. So, depreciations are allowed in know-how, patents, copyrights, trademarks, license, franchises, all these things because of the very fast nature of uh, business and uh, that is uh, possible to include in your uh, IP thing that uh, what is the depreciation you are charging on your uh, intangible assets. Generally, we charge depreciation on the tangible assets for example, car, machines, uh, your building, plant, machinery, all these things. But depreciation as per our uh, income tax act can also be possible on your uh, intangible assets. Section 35 A B is on deduction on expenditure on any know-how for use for the purpose of business. One sixth of the amount so paid shall be deducted in computing the profits and gains of the business for that previous year and the balance amount shall be deducted in equal installments for each of the five immediately succeeding uh, previous years. So, how this uh, depreciation will be charged in terms of uh, IP assets uh, that is mentioned in the section 35 AB. Section 80 double QA it is about income from 
copyrights. The IP right which is available to you for the longest period that is the copyright. So, any lump sum consideration for the assignment or grant of any of his interest in the copyright of any book or royalties or copyright fee in respect of such book there shall in accordance with the subject to the provisions of this section be allowed. In computing the total income of the assessee, a deduction from such income of an amount equal to 25 percent thereof. So, whatever income you are receiving in lump sum as result of your copyright transfer or copyright uh, income that will be added to your income, income of SSE and maximum amount equal to 25 percent can be deducted as part of the expenditure incurred in that particular copyright that is section 80 QQA. Section 80 RRB royalties for patent deduction is allowed equal to the whole of such income or 3 lakh rupees whichever is less. So, in case of uh, you have income from royalty for patents. So, you are getting royalty for patents because you are able to maintain the patent and therefore, there is some expenses on the uh, patent related activities and for that purpose you can reduce maximum up to 3 lakh rupees. If 3 lakh is the maximum income, so the entire income can be reduced otherwise uh, upper cap is 3 lakh rupees uh, you can have uh, deduction on this ground. Now, these are some of the subsections sections uh, which are relevant to know with respect to income from IP and the taxation system, but you see that uh, uh, there are still very much possibility there are grey areas where uh, you have that uh, some IP may not follow very strict uh, ownership rules. Then uh, brand values where lot of emotional issues are also involved uh, and uh, it is very difficult to have uh, right valuation or right uh, money related calculations on which you can have your uh, taxation system. And uh, in uh, licensing agreements also it is uh, quite possible that uh, your uh, income from license uh, may not be correctly reflected and uh, you may create some kind of via media for minimizing your tax uh, liabilities. And uh, in comparison to tangible assets uh, where you have uh, more or less uh, fixed to a particular assets, intangible assets are generally shifted to those places where you have low taxation because fixed asset you cannot move, but you can easily move your intangible assets to a different location. The meaning is you cannot move your plant from India to another country, but it is always possible that uh, I register my patent in a country where taxation is very, very low with respect to income on IP. So, that is a very important challenge for national governments uh, that uh, because of higher taxation many of us uh, who, who can expect uh, higher income from their IP, they may register their IPs uh, in those countries where taxations are low because of the uh, easy movement of this that is a very interesting characteristic of uh, uh, which we need to see from uh, IP portfolio management point of view that uh, are we registering our IP in high tax countries or we are registering IP in low tax countries. So, uh, they are uh, therefore, there are uh, good number of agencies, there are vigilances uh, which are continuously watching the IP assets, uh, their transferring policies uh, and uh, uh, they are seeing that uh, what type of uh, practices corporates are adopting for minimizing their tax liabilities with respect to IP incomes. So, IP related uh, activities are surely generating income, but uh, companies are continuously trying to use some of the uh, unique features of uh, intangible assets. Uh, to minimize their uh, uh, IP related uh, tax liabilities and uh, particularly whenever we are talking of uh, international IP taxation, it becomes even more complex because uh, IP can easily be transferred across the boundaries 
as we just discussed in the beginning of this particular session that how USA and India are involved in IP transfer. So, in this case uh, it is very important that uh, there has to be some kind of uh, treaties between the countries. So, that uh, uh, any kind of uh, violation of uh, income rules, uh, taxation rules uh, can be minimized and uh, here the understanding of arm's length principle is uh, uh, very, very uh, crucial and uh, uh, that we are going to see that uh, what is this arm's length principle in our uh, transfer pricing. So, this principle says that uh, price which is agreed in a transaction between two related parties must be the same as the price agreed in a comparable transaction between two unrelated parties. For example, as I said in the beginning of the session that uh, you have a parent company and uh, its subsidiary in a different country. So, these are two related parties where parent company is doing some kind of investment to start a subsidiary in a different country and it is quite possible their pricing is very high. Subsidiary may say that okay, I will pay you 50 percent royalty that is quite possible because subsidiary and parent are same, but can there be a 50 percent royalty payment if these two companies are unrelated it is not the subsidiary of the parent company, but uh, they are two unknown companies A and B. Maybe if it is only 10 percent payment of royalty which will be maximum in this case, then this arm's length principle is uh, helping us that uh, the price between parent and subsidiary should be somewhere closer to 10 percent. It may be 11 percent, it may be 9 percent, but it must be similar to the if it is 10 percent here and it is 50 percent here, it creates a lot of question and uh, there will be uh, issues related to fairness in this particular uh, transaction. So, this arm's length principle is very important and the tax agencies continuously keep watch on these things that uh, uh, whether uh, whenever there is a transfer pricing uh, arm's length principle is followed or not followed because uh, there will not be any case of uh, any kind of hidden agenda or uh, uh, lack of fairness when two unrelated parties are there. This issue happens only when two related parties and generally in terms of FDI when a parent company is making a subsidiary in some other uh, country. So, that arm's length principle is also very important to know uh, and uh, you need to do lot of search so that you know what is the comparable pricing when two unrelated parties are coming for this kind of technology transfer. So, with this we understood that uh, taxation has uh, different objectives for different parties, countries want to maximize their taxation, countries also want that more and more technology inflow should happen, but their payment for income should be properly under the tax regime. Uh, there may be possibility of some kind of uh, let us say uh, exaggerated uh, pricing of the uh, technology transfer. So, in that case this arm's length principle is very handy which will give you a comparable idea about the pricing and uh, uh, IP related taxing is uh, more dependent on country to country system. We presented some of the important uh, considerations which are available in India's income tax act. But uh, uh, for a global phenomena you need to see that uh, wherever more FDI is happening in across the globe it can be a good project activity what is the taxation system in those country on IP related matters uh, whether uh, low tax on IP matters uh, is a reason for more FDI in those reasons uh, in those countries or not. So, with this we come to end of this particular session thank you very much.